Good morning, God's beloved. Welcome to worship and happy Father's Day. It is warm out there, I know, but that just reminds us that, that we can be warm in our hearts for one another too, right? That's when, when you get hot out there, just go, oh, that's just my, my warm heart. That's my warm heart. It'll make you feel cool, but you're all cool already. It's going to be a beautiful day. We've got a lot going on today. We're going to have a wedding here later on this afternoon. That's right, the marriage of Ms. Deneen Sutton and Tony Burgi. We congratulate them. I know, I know she's watching at home, I'm sure. So congratulations, Deneen and Tony, and we'll see you here a bit later. And uh, let's see, yeah, it's hot out there. And, uh, and as we notice that heat, let, let's certainly be mindful of our neighbors, especially those uh, who have nowhere to go to get out of the heat. I know there are cooling stations around uh, here in Las Vegas, and they're open on Sunday this year, which I don't think they have been in years past, so that's good news. And uh, we do what we can to serve. Yesterday, our Girl Scout troop went over to Project for Humanity, which is right around the corner from us, and dropped off uh, summer survival kits for folks and cases of water, and we've got water here, so uh, we're doing our best to watch out for our neighbors and, and serve one another and, and love each other as best we can when it's hot out. Um, this was also Juneteenth weekend. We remember Juneteenth yesterday, now officially a federal holiday, and uh, though lots of states and lots of folks have been celebrating for a long, long time, and uh, we, Ivy and I got to spend some time with our local NAACP chapter, and uh, thanks to Pastor Marta for the invitation and get to hang out and, and uh, rejoice with our community together. So uh, we've got a lot going on this month, and, and there's more to come, more exciting events, and, and people are getting out and celebrating and enjoying the weather when they can and jumping in the pool. So stay cool out there, stay safe, and let's keep all that in our minds and in our prayers as we prepare ourselves for worship this morning. Welcome. Good morning, God's beloved. Welcome, Welcome home. home. Welcome to worship. We're glad you're here. Reformation, Reformation seeks to always be an open and welcoming faith community. Since all people are created in God's image, we are committed to working toward justice and inclusivity inside and outside the congregation. What does this mean? This means that our table is a place where Jesus sits down to share a meal with us. This means our faith community welcomes, includes, and affirms people of every race, color, and culture. People of every age, gender identity, and gender expression. People of every sexual orientation, marital status, and faith story. Every economic situation, physical and mental ability, educational level, and work history. In this church, you can be who you are and more fully become the person God made you to be. We come here to meet Jesus. Who meets us as we are, welcomes and leads us into the fullness of new life through his death and resurrection. Together we grow in faith and discover what it means to be the heart of Christ in the heart of the city.
Welcome in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please rise as we sing our opening hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the God of manna, the God of miracles, God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let, our, let us confess our sin. God, our provider. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, and you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. As we invite the children to come forward for the children's message. We've got a few here today. I think a few are hiding over there in that other room, but that's okay. Come on, Dana. Come on up here. What's going on? It's good to see you today. Good to see you, too. I'm glad you're here. And it's a special day today, isn't it? Yeah. What is it? Father's Day. Father's Day. That's right. 
And uh, your, let's see, your mom finished up her internship. She graduated from seminary. She's finished over at Holy Spirit. And we get to see you in worship now. That's great. We, we're happy for Welcome the Olson family back. All right. We love that. And you know, uh, you know I know you've been in a lot of churches now. All, uh, all seminary kids go to a lot of churches, and you get to see a lot of different places of worship. And I wanted to show you some special things about this church today. And a lot of pe I, people don't realize this, but do you know the church is shaped like a cross? Did you know that? That's right. Well, look, let's just look at the aisle. Like, we've got a one big aisle going down this way, and then we've got one going this way, don't we? Yeah. That's designed to look like a cross. It's supposed to be that. Maybe we don't notice that. Did you all notice that? You all knew that. <laughs> Helen knew that. How about this? I learned this by reading an, a newspaper article about this church when it was built in 1956. How many steps do you see up here? One, two, three, four. Four? Let, let's test them. Let's see. One, two, three. What, is, what do we think of when we hear three? You got it, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Did you know that's why there's three steps here? Now you know. Now, how about this place where all these people are sitting? Do you know what this is called? It has a special name. It's called the nave. Now, they all know that, too. A few of them probably knew that. This is the nave, right? And do you know that word, nave? It comes from a word in Latin, navis. If you knew this, raise your hand. Okay, I know your dad knew this, yeah. Novice, which we get the same word, Navy, right? Makes sense. We just sang the U.S. Navy hymn. That's what we sang in our opening hymn today. Why could that be? Maybe because we're going to hear a story about Jesus and the disciples in a boat. And so all these things are connecting now, we know, okay? But even more than that. So this place where we all sit together, we're all in the boat together too, you know? And if you look up, everybody look up at the ceiling. It looks like the bottom of a what? A boat. That's right. That's right. So when we come to church, we know that whatever storm's going on outside, whatever chaos is happening out there, we're all here in the boat together. And as we hear this story of Jesus in the boat, he's going to tell the waves and the wind to be quiet. Peace, be still. He calms the storms. And he makes all those disciples and all those followers in the boat, and there were other boats too, makes them feel his peace. So when we come in here and we sit in this nave, this boat, we're together with Jesus. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I love that. So listen for that in the story today, how Jesus calms the storms, and he's in the boat with the disciples, and he's in, remember that he's in the boat with us too. Will you pray with me? Sure. Holy God, thanks for keeping us together in this boat. Remind us of your peace and presence with us always. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming to church today. And we're going to continue with some special music.
from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 1 through 13. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's ways, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness. spoken frankly to you, Corinthians, our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children, open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, God. God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to Mark, chapter 4. Glory to you, Lord. When evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father in heaven and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. When I was a kid, I would watch reruns of old TV shows. It's on Nick at Night or Nickelodeon or one of those and, and uh, I love the monkeys because I loved music even though that show was as <laughs> bad as they come I suppose the Munsters they're getting a new movie next year that'll be interesting uh, Dennis the Menace great show great show the classics uh, but one I'm sure you'll remember the one you'll you'll definitely remember is the Lone Ranger oh, yeah. of course right and the show actually ran on television from 1949 to 1957, but those reruns must have been on for four decades before there was Chuck Norris. There was Clayton Moore, the last Texas Ranger. And every episode included great action and wrongs having been made right and the Lone Ranger riding off into the sunset. And then someone would ask, who was that masked man? 
Now you remember, now you remember. But did, didn't they know who it was? Like, I mean, the town wasn't that big, right? They, they had they'd just seen him ride into town, and surely he must have had a reputation by now, riding in on his trusted horse, Silver. And he'd rescued those in danger, and he'd solved the problem, and beat the bad guys, and generally saved the day. How could they not know him? Well, the mask, of course. We, we, you know, we get it now. It covered his eyes, although I guess it was really like three square inches around his eyes, so there was no way of recognizing him. And this was clearly the same generation that had a hard time uh, distinguishing Superman and Clark Kent because of a pair of glasses. <laughs> but, I mean, in order for us to uh, you know, enjoy the fantasy of the show, to, to really get into it, we have to suspend our disbelief, right? We have to kind of turn off that part of our brains that recognizes, so we know what's really going on here so that we can get into the story. And we want to see how the action plays out. We want to enjoy the tale along with the townspeople, so we play along. I, go, I, know, I know who that is, but I'm going to act like I don't know. The story of Jesus calming the sea is, is kind of like that too, for us anyway. We hear it, and we know who Jesus is. We're waiting for it. We're waiting to see what Jesus is going to do because we know he's going to do something big. Or at the very least, we aren't surprised when he does what seems to be miraculous to the fearful disciples in the boat. We're in on it. We get it. We're not afraid. But they were still trying to figure it out. Who is this Jesus and what must his actions and identity mean for them and for the world? But I mean, in this well-known story, there are plenty of things that might make us wonder. Why would they cross the sea at night in the first place? Didn't they know a storm was coming? These were fishermen. They kind of knew this territory, didn't they? And how can Jesus be asleep in the back of the boat and the waves are rocking and rolling and the ship is moving? He's a strong sleeper, but it makes sense. But let's not judge these disciples too harshly, okay? Well, sure, they'd seen Jesus heal the sick and cast out demons. They had to know there was something special about him. But there were others who did works of healing too. Yes, there were people who performed exorcisms. But Jesus was a different kind of teacher. He gave his power and authority away. He was teaching them and revealing God and the kingdom around them in their midst. And they were following him maybe to see what he would do next. So the author of, of the Gospel of Mark writes this down, shares this story around a time uh, that there were just as many storms going on in, in that world. This is the time of the destruction of the temple, about 70 AD, all right? So think about 37 years after, after Jesus' death, something like that. And they were, those who were hearing Mark's good news knew about storms, too. Bible scholar David Jacobson from Boston University describes the era. The center of worship was destroyed. The cultural and religious center of the people no longer holds. And in the midst of all this chaos, when the world as known was ending, here this Jesus is revealed, not as one more therapist or miracle worker, but as a revelation of God's extraordinary cosmic purpose in the person of this ordinary Jesus. And just like you or I after a long day of work, this Jesus needs a nap. The storms were real. The people were afraid. And the one taking place in their society and the one there on the sea, so they were putting these things together, right? It's a place where the winds there on the Sea of Galilee, the winds can whip this sea up quickly. And the waves can get large enough to topple a boat, sure. And we hear in the reading, there were other boats out there with them. Now, we know Israel and Judah weren't generally seafaring societies. They left that to the Phoenicians. The sea was dangerous. It was unknown. This was a place of chaos, where the monsters came from. So we can understand. The disciples on the boat are understandably afraid. Who can save them? And they've tried to let him rest, but... Jesus is their last hope, so they have to go and they wake him up. And they wonder if he doesn't care about the storm, doesn't care about their lives or their safety. How can he sleep at a time like this? They must be offended. 
but he wakes up and with a word rebukes the wind. He says to the sea, peace, be still. And it happened. The sea became calm and the wind ceased. Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? From then until now, the world has known fear. Humanity has had to contend against chaos, wind and waves. We've been through our own storms here too. Oppression, war, inequality, disease, distrust. From the Strand in Galveston, June 19th, 1865, to Stonewall in Greenwich Village, June 28th, 1969, and to today, people have known the tension between fear and faith. Those who survived enslavement had faith that a day was going to come when they would know liberation. Those who'd been victimized or maimed or killed for their sexual orientation still had faith that they could begin to bring change for the community, even while they were afraid. So we've seen storms here too, right? Mass shootings, economic crisis, protests, along with droughts and fires and floods. We've been through a global pandemic. So put that one on your list. And I don't know that we've survived it yet. We're still in it. We've been through it. We've seen the unemployment and the underemployment and the isolation and the anxiety and the depression, homelessness and hunger it has brought with it. And we find ourselves still out on the sea. And if we're not afraid for ourselves, we can at least be fearful for those who are going through their own storms or what yet may come our way. So we are exhausted and we are irritated and frustrated and fearful at times. And maybe our faith is running low or it seems that way. And we need to be renewed. And these are times we turn to Jesus. Especially when we're at our lowest, when we're at the end of our rope, at the bottom of the pit, and we cry out to God. And Jesus hears. And Jesus knows. And Jesus will act. And we can be renewed because we know Jesus is faithful for us. Even when our faith is running low, Jesus is faithful. And when we cry out, our community hears it too. And people show up and they share a meal. And they come together to sing and pray, to give blood, their food, to give their labor. We come together. We build each other up. Even through the fear, and faith sustains us, strengthens us, and makes us new. But why is Jesus sleeping? Well, he's Jesus. He's not afraid. He knows what he will do. And he's not worried. These other guys in the boat, of course, they don't quite know yet who he is or what he's capable of. They're still figuring out what that means for them in the story. They're about to find out. He wakes up. He doesn't ask them to do anything, right? He doesn't require a prayer or an oath or an offering. He does what they cannot do for themselves. He rebukes the wind. He calms the sea. And the word rebuke in the story, it's the same word used back in chapter 1. In the Greek, it, it can mean to instruct by warning. But it means to, to rebuke. It's the same word he uses when he casts out demons. It demonstrates his authority over the powers of evil in the world. It, it's also a teaching word. He's instructing his followers during this event. This fully human, fully sleepy Jesus demonstrates the fully divine power of God over the sea at night, the powers of chaos and darkness. For the sake of the disciples, for those around them, and they still wonder, who is this guy? Jesus, the one who calms the wind and the waves, who rebukes them and the demons that still haunt us, is the one we turn to in our times of fear, renews us through faith. It's not just about our faith, but Jesus' faith in the goodness and perseverance of God over the powers of evil that still exist 
and the ultimate victory in his cross through the death and resurrection, his victory over our failings and our fears and over death itself. Jesus is the Son of God who is with us always and sends us power too through the Holy Spirit to change our hearts, to open us up for the world around us, to bind us to him and to one another, to remind us of this love that sustains us, that renews us physically, inside and out, renews us for the world, renews us in faith for a new day. His faithfulness guides us and leads us for the sake of those in the boats around us, for our neighbors. And when they are afraid or facing their own storms, we get to be the ones to remind them not to be afraid. Jesus is here. Because it's Jesus that moves us from fear to faith and renews us along the way. Our fears warn us and instruct us, but Jesus calms our fears so they don't paralyze us. He casts them out. He rebukes them. And his voice calls us to trust in his identity as the one who can save. His cross reminds us who he is so that we don't have to ask, who then is this? But to trust and believe that he is our Lord and Savior who carries us through the storms of life and brings us safely home. Amen. Together with all our siblings here in the ship with us, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Assembly of God, we gather your people from east and west, north and south. We pray for the mission of the church throughout the world, that your steadfast love may be made known to all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. You laid the foundations of the earth and the waters of the womb of the creation. The morning stars sing your name, and all creation shouts for joy. We pray for your blessed creation that may continue to flourish and magnify your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. We keep watch over all nations. We pray for countries experiencing violence, hunger, and unrest, especially in Afghanistan, Israel, Palestine, and at our southern border. Protect our troops and first responders and guide worldwide and local community organizations in their efforts to establish safety and justice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. We are close to the brokenhearted and near to those in distress. We pray for those who are experiencing oppression. Liberate, it, liberate us from the systems and chains that bind us. Remove the barriers that separate us from one another. We pray for all in need of healing, especially Kate Carl, Tony, Taylor, Maxine's sister Chris, Rose's sister Gail, Christine, Captain Eileen, Kelly, Bob and Debbie, Peggy and Wendell, Pete, Debbie and Debbie, just sent from Senate, excuse me. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. You dwell with us here in the heart of the city. We pray for our leaders of our faith communities, especially our church council, synod council, pastors and bishops. Grant them knowledge, patience, and kindness through their leadership, you may be exalted in the assembly. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. You create us in your image. Grant us grace to contend fearlessly against evil and to make no peace with oppression. Help us, like those of generations before us, who resisted the evil of slavery and human bondage in any form and in any manner of oppression. Help us to use our freedoms to bring justice among people and nations everywhere. The glory of your holy name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Your love endures in all situations. On this Father's Day, we pray for those who are fathers or wish to be fathers, for those with broken or strained relationships, for those who are missing their fathers, and for fathers who have lost children. Bless it and strengthen them, Lord. Strengthen them, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Hear our prayers. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. We share a sign of peace with one another. Peace be with you. We continue with the offering of our tithes and of our lives in thanks giving for your support of this mission and ministry.
Please rise. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and he blessed it and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. These are God's holy things for God's holy people. Take, taste, and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated.
the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you now and into eternal life. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Our uh, Bible study is off today. Pastor Matt was supposed to be over at Holy Spirit Lutheran Church, but... Uh, they, they got canceled today because of the heat, so keep them in your prayers. But our Bible study will be, actually be back on July 11th. We've got a lot going on between now and then, so join us for that. Barbara Coggins is here from Family Promise. She's going to be joining us over in Edwin's Hall right after worship. So uh, especially for those of you who want to con continue to serve with Family Promise and their new Just Neighbors project, uh, come on over, learn more about it, and find out what it's going to take. And it's going to be a really great program. I've mentioned it a couple of times, but... Barbara's going to give us the real run through today over in Edwin's Hall right after we finish up worship. Next Sunday after worship, we are here for our semi-annual meeting. We get to hear some updates on our strategic plan, elect some new council members. We're excited about that and say goodbye to some who have served their time. And uh, that's a good thing. So join us for that Sunday. And if you can't be here in person, there will be a Zoom link in your email and on the website. You'll be able to join us and uh, be a part of the meeting that way. So know that you are involved and included, and we know you're there and you're here with us. VBS is coming for my VBS leaders and uh, crew, crew leaders and station leaders. I've got the instruction manuals out there for you. Don't let me forget, but uh, you know what station you're leading. I've got your manual and your instructions for you. If you're online and you wanna drop by the church this week, come see us and we'll make sure you get what you need too. Now we know war is not a good thing, but there is a war that we need to be a part of here, folks. That's right. The Lutheran Social Services of Nevada peanut butter wars are happening. And I know, I know how it is. Those big churches like Good Sam and New Song, they want to collect pallets and mountains and trucks loads of peanut butter. But listen, we can get in the game too, folks. We can show up and show up big. All it takes is getting that peanut butter, bring it here. We're gonna make sure it gets to LSSN where it needs to go. And if you'd like to write a check, a peanut butter check, you can do that too. And you can drop off that check here and put it in the plate and just write peanut butter on that check so that we show up. Our name, our name is in the running, okay? We're gonna do some big things for the peanut butter wars and uh, let LSSN know that we care and we're taking care of our people. And you know what's, everybody, when people stop by here and they, they want something, they need some snacks, they need some sustenance, they always ask for peanut butter. They love that. They love that. And we need that too. It's my every night snack, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. Well, look, we are altar flowers given today and last week by Pat and Eileen Ward in memory of their granddaughter, Cody. You too can sponsor our altar flowers prepared with the delicate hands of Helen Smith. And uh, they are beautiful. And you can just write a, a, a name on our flower chart out in the narthex and uh, dedicate those flowers for your special memory or anniversary too. So we thank you for that. Pat and Eileen. 
And now an announcement from the first lady. She didn't want me to say that. Come on up here so they can see you. Come on. Hello, everybody. I'm short. Um, I just want to invite everyone to Edwin's. Also, you know, family promise, but we have a dads and donuts event. So we've uh, individually packaged some donuts from Winchell's and there's coffee. I would love to invite you all. All are welcomed in honor of Father's Day. Please come and join us in there. Thanks. That's how I get my kids to come to church. You just gotta, have, you gotta bring the donuts. I, it's just one technique, I offer it to you. Please rise as you're able for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor, smile on you, and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Let's sing our closing hymn, The Lord Now Sends Us Forth. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.